Good evening, everyone. I'm Julie Humphreys. I'm Randy Shaw. Welcome to 11 at 11. Here's what's happening tonight. A fire at the Kaiser Aluminum plant at Mead could leave as many as 100 workers with no job to go to tomorrow morning, and quite possibly for the next few weeks. Eric Thompson has been talking to workers all night about the crisis. Here's his report. Media has not been allowed on site since the first alarm went out just after 4 o'clock, but the fire gutted a two-story building that housed ventilation compressors and gas-fired boilers. The single employee who was assigned the area usually goes home at about 2.30, and that could be one reason the fire was so far along when firefighters arrived. In other words, the fire had so much uh, progression on it when we got here that we're putting water on it from the outside. If we do inside, it will be after the fire is knocked down to the point where we feel safe with going inside. The plant's on-site substation automatically cuts off in the event of a blaze, and that hampered firefighters' efforts in the critical first few moments after showing up on the scene. Q6 could not get confirmation about the cause of the power outage to Line 3, but it does contain 142 aluminum pots, which, if left without power for about two hours, solidify. Approximately 100 jobs could be affected by a shutdown of Line 3, according to our sources. We tried most of the evening to reach two of the people who could give us more information about the fire at Kaiser Mead this afternoon. Dave Chose, plant director, and Mark Eliopoulos, the safety director. Neither was available by phone, so we came to the plant gate and were told by the guard that while they were on site, neither would speak until a press release was published. No word tonight on when that might be. Eric Thompson is here now from the scene of that fire. Any injuries reported out there? Uh, no injuries to any employees of Kaiser Aluminum, but there were minor injuries suffered by a couple of firefighters. They've been treated and they're okay at this time. Well, that's good to hear. We had reports at one time of some toxic substances, perhaps, in the area. What's the story on that? Firefighters and some uh, employees uh, told me about a barrel or two of what they thought were PCBs on site. Of course, that's yet to be confirmed by the EPA, which is doing some studies on the substance. Uh, it was not involved in the blaze, and it doesn't look like anything got loose. All 50 firefighters from three fire districts in the Spokane Fire Department did undergo decontamination following the blaze, which consists of being washed off because of possible asbestos that was uh, being sprayed around with the water uh, that was being used. Apparently they wrapped the pipes with asbestos in older buildings, so uh, that's yet to be uh, uh, confirmed as well, but that's what the uh, firefighters were uh, understanding at the point after the fire. So I'm sure we're going to hear more about this tomorrow. Anyway. We probably will. We'll have to wait and see. All right, thank you. Eric Thompson reporting. Well, there was... Two firefighters are hurt battling a blaze at the Kaiser Aluminum plant in Mead. Good evening, everybody. I'm Charles Rowe. And I'm Nadine Woodward. Two firefighters suffered smoke inhalation. One was treated at the scene. The other was transported to Holy Family Hospital. Creme 2 Steve Becker has more on the Kaiser fire in this. Could you let uh, your divisions know that we've got the water pumps in this plant all on manuals? Access to water turned out to be a real problem for firefighters. Once the flames were discovered, Kaiser workers followed a plan designed to prevent the fire from spreading. It was then that they discovered a glitch. Uh, we are having some water supply problems as they're trying to cut down the uh, utilities to the area of the plant. They're also cutting down the uh, utilities that run the fire, the water pumps. So they're having to, to uh, segregate those and get those uh, turned back. Uh, we're gonna be, it looks like we're going to make pretty good penetration from this end. The fire started in a boiler room on the back side of the Kaiser Mead complex. All of the people who work in that area got out safely. The fire officials still called for a show of force. Crews from all over Spokane were on hand to battle the fire should it spread. So at this point in time, we, we've uh, broken the fire in two different divisions. And um, uh, basically, they're trying to confine the fire to the building protect the fire from spreading to exposures, and then try to uh, work towards extinguishment. Copy. So they, have, they do have full water supply? Yes. The plan worked. A little over an hour and a half after the fire was first reported, crews had put it out and were busy mopping up. Steve Becker, Krem News. Now, shortly after we first told you about the Kaiser fire at 5 o'clock, we received calls from workers who were worried about highly toxic asbestos that may have been burned to contact the Kaiser Company for a reaction, but have had no response to our phone calls. Fire officials say they worked under the assumption asbestos was present, and their firefighters were decontaminated at the scene. 
The state fire marshal has been called in to help pinpoint the cause of that blaze. And another And this is News 4 at 11. A pillar of black smoke stretches sky high. Crews scramble to douse a blaze at Kaiser Mead. Good evening. Dozens joined the battle, but there was no stopping the flames. Some workers were evacuated. The fire broke out shortly before 4. Snarling shift change traffic. Police rerouted cars along Hawthorne so fire crews could do their job. Cindy Perkovich was there as the first engines arrived on the scene. And, Cindy, I understand that this building is key to Kaiser operations. Oh, you're right, Rick. It's known just as Building 66, but Kaiser Mead workers know it as the gas and boiler house. It supplies steam for the carbon presses and the heating system. But now officials will have to find a backup because Building 66 has been destroyed. It is a race against time, and whatever is fueling the fire... Already, crew chiefs are faced with complications. It'll be a while before we know whether we have any water supply. We are having some water supply problems as they're trying to cut down the uh, utilities to the area of the plant. They're also cutting down the uh, utilities that run the fire, the water pumps. Tankers roll on the scene. The call has gone out for more help. Fire bosses divide their crews, plan their attack. You can see the building's about uh, 60 foot by 140 foot, and that has the compressor in it and uh, chopper, etc. But the fire has a strong head start. A column of smoke seemingly reaches to the clouds, and just as it disappears, flames punch through. The heat is intense. The building is fed by natural gas, and some speculate a leak is feeding the fire. The, 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 the real positive thing is we've got the wind that's coming out of, out of the southwest. So. Mother Nature protects surrounding buildings, but this one is lost. It takes two hours, but firefighters finally win. That they've got all the fire at the eastern half of the building, and they're doing, they're still doing apparently some uh, playing of water in this, but they're uh, not much. There's not much fire fire left. Fortunately, no one was injured. Kaiser officials have not been available for comment tonight, so we have no idea how extensive the damage is. Could the fire affect future operations at the Mead plant? Well, we're not really sure about that, Rick, but we do know that some of the people on the scene said that they might have to call in a backup system to replace this. We don't know right now whether that will affect the carbon process or not. We hopefully we'll find out some more tomorrow. And of course, the Kaiser folks aren't talking to us. No, are they're they? not. No, they're not. Thank you, Cindy. Well, Boeing. Rankies, this is Q6 News. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Randy Shaw. Hi, and I'm Deborah Wild. Yesterday's fire at Kaiser Aluminum's Mead plant has a union official worried today about exposure to asbestos and toxic PCBs at that plant. Now, Gary Derrigal tells us the building that burned used asbestos for insulation and had PCBs in the siding of the building. The firemen who fought the flames at the Kaiser Mead plant had to go through decontamination after the blaze. The reason? Asbestos and toxic PCBs used in the construction of the old building. Which Kaiser Works now? manager Dave Chose today confirmed the presence of the dangerous substances in that building and others at the Mead Works. The uh, facility, of course, was built in 1942. Back then, that was a current technology. We have several locations that the potential exists. We've been addressing that over time. That has at least one union official worried. Safety Committee member Stuart Dolman provided this document from the State Labor and Industries Department, which he says shows Kaiser was cited last March for using uncertified workers to remove asbestos at the Mead plant. Dolman is frightened about the possibility of exposure. Uh, we're not sure what the total exposures were. We're running uh, what's called high vol samples uh, to find out what the exposure levels are at the time. Uh, once the fire department found out that there was asbestos and PCBs in there, they made all their, uh, their firemen put on their SCBA units. The SCBAs he's talking about are self-contained breathing apparatus, and they're used to keep asbestos out of the lungs of firefighters. As for the operation of the plant and the workers here, there won't be any layoffs taking place. They brought in portable compressors and boilers, and that's keeping the plant virtually at its full production capacity. At Kaiser Mead, 
Gary Derrigal, Q6 News. Kaiser says it still doesn't have a cause for the fire yet. However, the state fire marshal today told Q6 News the probable cause is sparks from a welding job in the building that houses the boilers and the compressors. Washington State. Well, it'll be at least another week before the cause of that fire at the Kaiser Mead plant is known. That fire broke out at the aluminum plant yesterday about four in the afternoon. Uh, the blaze was isolated to the plant's boiler compressor building. Firefighters from Meade and Spokane had the flames under control by about 5.30. Today, a Kaiser official said the plant's compressor was destroyed, but the boiler could possibly be saved. The area around the fire's bow had been closed off because of asbestos that might have been released. Asbestos is found in the insulation around the boiler. A state investigation team is now looking into the cause of that fire. Uh, no damage estimate is available yet, and there were no injuries. Our rain today may be good news for your... And this is News 4 at 5. Fire crews scramble as a three-alarm blaze breaks out at the Kaiser Mead plant. Good afternoon. Black smoke is pouring from that plant right now. A fire apparently started in the compressor room. News 4's John Ellison is standing by live at the plant. And John, just how bad is the fire at this point? Elaine, we just a few moments ago got an update from Spokane Fire Chief Bobby Williams. It appears the fire is still burning inside one of the buildings here at the Kaiser Mead facility. Fire crews, though, have that building surrounded. They are trying to uh, keep an eye on some hazardous materials that are inside this building, apparently, and also some diesel fuel. But we've been told there, thankfully, are no injuries here. This fire broke out at about 4.15 this afternoon. We had one viewer call us at News 4 and say that he was driving by at the time and heard an explosion. We are not told, though, officially what has caused this fire. Right now, there are about two dozen fire units at the scene here on uh, Nevada near Hawthorne, and they set up a command post right in front of this Kaiser Mead facility. We understand the entire plant has been evacuated. Again, a report that there have been no injuries. A couple of ambulances were dispatched uh, immediately, and it sent off a very frantic scene here for the, about a half hour or so as fire volunteers from Fire District 9 and other ones around this area. This is generally a rural area were rushed to the scene. Also, Spokane City fire units are on the scene. And as we say, they're still inside battling this fire. They have a blanket of water which is going up on this building, trying to keep the heat down and try to keep these, this diesel fuel and hazardous materials that are inside this building, as we were told by the chief, uh, from catching fire. There's also some exposure problems with a railroad facility, apparently, and also other buildings. We'll remain on the scene when we have more. We'll be back to you. All right, John Ellison reporting to us live from the Kaiser Mead plant. Spokane College Teachers. As we told you at the top of our newscast, firefighters from the city of Spokane have been called to help battle a major blaze at Kaiser's Mead plant. It broke out at about 4 o'clock this afternoon. Now, witnesses telling News 4 they heard an explosion just prior to the fire that broke out, but that has not been confirmed. John Allison is at Kaiser Mead right now. And John, what is the latest? Elaine, uh, right now uh, behind us, as you can probably see, the smoke has stopped uh, coming from this Kaiser Mead facility, but we have not been told yet that the fire is completely out. It broke out at about 4.15 this afternoon in a two-story brick building that houses a compressor facility that uh, keeps air pumping into the rest of the plant. There were thick columns of black smoke shooting into the air for some time, and firefighters originally got some water on the blaze. We were told, though, there was diesel fuel and other flammables inside, and there were several rushes of black smoke throughout uh, the hour or so that uh, smoke was coming from the building. We are told, though, that there have been no injuries. As you said, there is a report there was an explosion as this fire began. That, of course, has not been confirmed yet. We are told that there are a few barrels of hazardous material inside this building. That from Spokane Fire Chief Bobby Williams. We spoke with him just a short time ago. In the fire in two different divisions, and um, uh, basically they're trying to confine the fire to the building, protect the fire from spreading to exposures, and then try to uh, work towards extinguishment. Now, while uh, the smoke does appear to have stopped, at least for now here at Kaiser Mead, just in the last five or six minutes, we have seen several new fire units arriving on this scene with sirens blazing. We were told there was a problem while this fire was being fought with water. 
Kaiser does have a water facility, a water plan that helps to fight fires that break out here. But apparently, as uh, plant managers shut down some of the electricity here to prevent uh, more problems associated with the fire, we are told by uh, Fire Chief Williams that the water system also shut down. So there may have been some problems for firefighters battling the blaze. We were told they were putting a blanket of water on this building to try to keep the temperature down. As we said earlier, there is diesel fuel and uh, perhaps a few barrels of hazardous material inside the building. They're trying to keep the temperature down. Uh, it appears that at this point the fire may be out, but we have not been told that officially. Again, though, Elaine and Rick, no injuries here at Kaiser Mead. John, do you know if this fire has affected operations at all there? Well, certainly the plant has been evacuated. We heard that over some uh, fire radios uh, just a short time ago. Uh, I would assume that because the electricity throughout the plant apparently was shut down and that led to the problem with the water system, that the plant is effectively uh, closed down at this point and probably will be, I would assume, for some time. All right. Thank you very much. John Ellison reporting to us live from the Kaiser Mead plant. A North Spokane home was destroyed. And this is News 4 at 11. A pillar of black smoke stretches sky high. Crews scramble to douse a blaze at Kaiser Mead. Good evening. Dozens joined the battle, but there was no stopping the flames. Some workers were evacuated. The fire broke out shortly before 4. Snarling shift change traffic. Police rerouted cars along Hawthorne so fire crews could do their job. Cindy Perkovich was there as the first engines arrived on the scene. And Cindy, I understand that this building is key to Kaiser operations. Oh, you're right, Rick. It's known just as Building 66, but Kaiser Mead workers know it as the gas and boiler house. It supplies steam for the carbon presses and the heating system. But now officials will have to find a backup because Building 66 has been destroyed. It is a race against time and whatever is fueling the fire. Already crew chiefs are faced with complications. It'll be a while before we know whether we have any water supply or not. We are having some water supply problems as they're trying to cut down the uh, utilities to the area of the plant. They're also cutting down the uh, utilities that run the fire, the water pumps. Tankers roll on the scene. The call has gone out for more help. Fire bosses divide their crews, plan their attack. And you can see the building's about uh, 60 foot by 140 foot, and that has the compressor in it and uh, shopper, etc. But the fire has a strong head start. A column of smoke seemingly reaches to the clouds, and just as it disappears, flames punch through. The heat is intense. The building is fed by natural gas, and some speculate a leak is feeding the fire. The, 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 the real positive thing is we've got the wind that's coming out of, out of the southwest. So. Mother Nature protects surrounding buildings, but this one is lost. It takes two hours, but firefighters finally win. That they've got all the fire out the eastern half of the building, and they're doing, they're still doing apparently some uh, playing of water in this, but they're. Uh, not much. There's not much fire, fire left. Fortunately, no one was injured. Kaiser officials have not been available for comment tonight, so we have no idea how extensive the damage is. Could the fire affect future operations at the Mead plant? Well, we're not really sure about that, Rick, but we do know that some of the people on the scene said that they might have to call in a backup system to replace this. We don't know right now whether that will affect the carbon process or not. We mm. Hopefully, we'll find out some more tomorrow. And of course, the Kaiser folks aren't talking to us. No, they? they're not. No, they're not. Thank you, Cindy. Well, Boeing has landed a deal with the de State fire investigators today began sifting through burned remains from that major fire at Kaiser Mead's aluminum plant. It may have fully destroyed a building housing vital electrical and mechanical systems. But plant managers are counting their blessings. Aluminum production was only disrupted for a few hours. John Allison today spoke with a Kaiser worker who first discovered the fire. Within just minutes, it was up in flames. Steve Helms says he didn't feel much like sleeping last night. The Kaiser press mechanic was inside the compressor building shortly before the fire began and later got dangerously close after discovering the fire. From the time we got the hoses till we got them across the street, the flames were, you know, it was just too much and too much heat. You could see, uh, you know, rubber dripping and from the heat and everything. And uh, 
there was acetylene bottles and everything, so I uh, thought it would be safer to get everybody out of there. The fire has done extensive but localized damage. A full assessment still has not been done. The building contained electrical systems that, among other things, ran a network of fire hydrants around the plant. But those systems had to be shut down, and eventually, the 50 firefighters on the scene ran out of water. Of course, as that building was engulfed in the flames, it cut out some of those control systems which were to the, the pumping systems. I guess our opinion, our observations as we were there, is that the fire was essentially spent uh, when the uh, trucks ran out of water. Firefighters were forced to call in extra water tankers to help finish off the flames. Today, workers.